let's talk about a specific kind of a perturbation to our system namely the Gaussian perturbation so it's again a time dependence perturbation and we're going to assume that the perturbation is turned on and off with uh, some Gaussian time dependence right and so for such a case or such a system right the Hamiltonian is going to uh, be li written like this over here sorry <laughs> It's going to be it's like this thing over here right and here the uh, tau is the characteristic time constant of our perturbation so now if you look at this graph on the right hand side uh, you can see that a perturbation is a maximum at at my t is equal to zero and it becomes minimal a few time constants away right so this is a Gaussian perturbation and we are going to have to compute the expansion coefficients for this uh, system and then we'll use those to calculate the transition probability of uh, what what is the transition probability from making uh, some transition from its initial state to a particular final state and then we are going to interpret that uh, result, that expression or the probability. And we are also going to see that uh, what, why do we uh, use this kind of an example to study the perturbation, right? Okay, so let me start with first uh, by recalling that I derived from my previous video on transition amplitudes the expansion coefficients can be written as or uh, or are written as ck as a function of time is equal to 1 over iota h bar the time integral from 0 to t and the matrix element of my perturbed Hamiltonian as a function of time times the exponential iota over h bar uh, the difference in the energy of the states E k minus E i times my some t prime and uh, the integral is then going to be carried out over some t prime right so d t prime right and uh, here again note that my E k minus E i over this h bar is uh, known as the bars frequency omega ki right okay so well for our specific problem of the Gaussian perturbation look at our graph over here that the perturbation is maximum at my time time equals zero and is minimal from negative infinity and when you go to positive infinity the perturbation is minimal or it's turned off right okay so for uh, such a case then my expansion coefficients let's call them cf for this example the limit of my time integral will change and so it will go from negative infinity to uh, positive infinity and for such a case let me write down my expansion coefficient cf as a function of time is then simply going to be 1 over iota h bar negative infinity to positive infinity the matrix element of my perturbation time dependent perturbation Hamiltonian uh, instead of calling these ki now let me just uh, write them as fi f for final state and i for initial state right so let me write that down again f and my i over here times usual the exponential function of my iota over h bar the difference in energies that is e f minus e i and t prime the integral is over d t prime 
Right. So we could have used uh, simply t over here because now the integral limits are not from 0 to some t as an expression but minus infinity to positive infinity. But let's just go with t prime, right? So t prime is nothing but the time, right? The normal time. Okay. So now again, let's uh, use the Hamiltonian, this Hamiltonian over here for my system and let's plug it over here in this. So all I'm going to do now is put the value of the Hamiltonian that is V naught exponential negative t square over tau square in this expression of my expansion coefficients. So let's do that on the next page. So and what I'm also going to do is that note that I just mentioned before that my omega fi is going to be my 1 over h bar times e f minus e i. So in place of where I have e f minus e i over h bar in my expansion coefficients, I'm going to replace it with omega f i, right? So that will shorten our expression. And I'm going to insert the value of or the expression of the Hamiltonian in my expansion coefficient. So let's do that over here. So that will be my cf as a function of infinity, right? Now, now because t is going to infinity, is equal to 1 over iota h bar, the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now I can have v naught and the exponential term I can take it outside right of this matrix element thing because that is just a constant however v naught is a function of an operator right and so it will act on my i so I cannot just move that around okay so now I'll have here my exponential negative t square over tau squared times my exponential that was my iota and I'm going to replace that quantity with omega fi so omega fi t prime and let's close this expression and I'll have my dt prime alright so now this is the expression for my expansion coefficient and now what I can do is if I look at this this exponential over here it can be uh, written in terms of my sine and cosines right but note that the sine function the sine part of this expression over here sine omega fi times t that is is going to be odd with respect to uh, my t prime being equal to zero and so then if that is the case the sine function is just going to vanish so it will be zero and I'll be only left with the cosine part of my exponential this exponential over here right so I'm just now what I'm going to do in next step is write it in terms of that sine and cosines but my sine part is going to vanish so it be, I, I'll only be left with the cosine part of it so let me do that over here cf as a function of infinity is going to be 1 over iota h bar and uh, I'll have this matrix element will come outside the integral because it's not dependent on time so write like this and then I'll have my integral again minus infinity to positive infinity and now for this expression over here the exponential I'll have my cos omega fi times t right and this exponential over here so exponential negative t squared over tau squared all right and then let's not forget the dt prime the dt prime 
and uh, now a recall from uh, integral calculus that this integral of um, this thing over here this whole integral can be written as or is evaluated as uh, let me write it down over here once again cosine omega fi t times the exponential of my negative t square over tau square so negative t square over tau squared uh, dt prime right or I am not writing t prime for my this cos and t so I will just say I'll just say that this is dt now so this integral over here from integral calculus is simply as uh, the under root pi and uh, I have my tau right and then the exponential so exponential term is negative omega fi squared tau squared over 4 right so you can just look up this integral uh, from any table I have used the value I'll, I'm going to use this value of this integral and I'm going to substitute in the above expression for this expansion coefficients so let's do that on the next page so when I do that what I get is my expansion coefficient cf of infinity is equal to my f uh, v naught i over iota iota h bar times my under root pi tau exponential negative omega fi squared tau squared over 4 all right now recall that what is your transition probability now so from the previous lecture on transition probability we derived that the transition probability for the transition from i to f state is given as the modulus square of my expansion coefficient right so it was t over here but my t is now infinity so let me just generally write it down so this was the probability of a transition happening from some initial state to a final state and if that is the case then all I have to do is take the square of these expansion coefficients that I have derived over here right so I'll just take the square of this value and I'll get the transition probability from going from my initial state to final state right so let's just do that over here that then that will be equal to the initial to final is then equal to pi tau squared over h bar squared sorry yeah over h bar squared yeah and times the modulus square of my this thing over here times the exponential now I'm squaring the exponential what that simply means is that I'll multiply with 2 whatever is in the exponential so I'll get this thing over instead of 4 I'll get 2 now right so this expression over here right gives me 
the probability of the transition happening, right? And so let's uh, interpret this result now, right? Uh, to interpret this result, uh, see that this result, this expression over here, what it tells you is that to have uh, enough amount or say the an appreciable amount of probability for the transition from state i to state f, right? the time constant of must be of an order of the inverse of my Bohr's frequency. So what that means is that uh, the time constant, uh, order of time constant must be of the inverse of my Bohr's frequency. So that is what it means, right? Okay, so, uh, so that there are the frequency components in the time dependent Hamiltonian that include the Bohr frequency omega fi for the transition, right? So what uh, lesson uh, or why do we use this example is that uh, it concerns a perturbation that is like turned on and off very slowly, right? So what that means is that it is uh, the uh, time constant is very long compared to any other times. So any other time t, right? And so as the time constant becomes large enough, the product omega fi times tau approaches infinity, right? That's obvious. So the probability of the transition then happening between the two states will then go to zero. That means that there will, uh, the transition will not happen or almost not happen, right? So this was just an example of the uh, transition probability that we derived in the previous lecture for time-dependent perturbation or the time-dependent Hamiltonians. And I hope that this gives you a bit of an idea of why do we use or uh, what is the reason for the transition probability, right? And so in next video, we'll continue Maybe uh, I might uh, look at an example for a harmonic oscillator uh, and the transition happening in the states of the harmonic oscillator, right? So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and gained something useful from it, right?